Hello everyone, this is Darkfire Slide here with more of our Europa Universalis 4 introductory campaign. We have just taken Aragon and Valencia from Aragon itself, and we are just about to core them. So we were talking about, uh, last time about striking a balance in between our diplomatic and administrative power. Now this is just a personal opinion and you could make a case against this, but generally in my experience, diplomatic power is basically the least useful kind of uh, monarch power and the reason for that is because the only things you could really do with it are a improve your navy which can be useful um, I mean you do spend it to get your uh, navy tech up you know your diplomatic technology um, which is tied directly to ships um, you can use it for that purpose so it can be important for a you know like a nation like Britain and, and like us really um, but since this is an introductory campaign, we're not particularly worried too much about um, having naval superiority. Though, later on in the series, that will change. At the moment, however, it's not a major concern, so diplomatic power is not that important to us. Um, and in general, the reason it's not considered to be very good is because there's only so much you can do with it. Um, you know, aside from raising your technology, um, if we look at the idea groups here, and this is just a personal, of course, um, most of these ideas that you buy with diplomatic points, um, and I was and I was waiting until we actually got an idea to explain how ideas work, but basically um, all of these diplomatic ideas, which you have to spend diplomatic power on, um, are not very good. You know, maritime ideas are nice, but they're not amazing. Influence ideas is good but it's not great. Diplomatic ideas is the best one out of diplomatic ideas. But even so, it's still debatable in its usefulness in in my you know, a personal opinion. Now, on the other hand, if you have to take one of these, which you probably should anyway because uh diplomatic policies can be good because they take uh diplomatic points, and this is only going to make sense to the experienced players, of course. But diplomatic policies take diplomatic points, so it's not that bad. Um in that sense. And, and as well, you need to strike a balance between how much power you're spending on ideas anyway. But we'll get more into that as we unlock our ideas. Um, for the time being, we are going to spend diplomatic power to reduce our war exhaustion. And bam, look at that. The, by reducing our war exhaustion, spending 75 diplomatic power, our national unrest has gone down by a significant margin. And suddenly the only uh, rebels that exist are these Catalan patriots. Now, how do you, how do you deal with uh, rebels? Um, if we look here... It shows, um, basically, like, how it works is, um, every month it, uh, has a chance to raise the progress by a certain percentage, um, and as such, it means that, and it tells you basically, like, in about four and a half years, we are gonna have, you know, we can expect a revolt, uh, from these Catalan patriots. Now, Sometimes maybe you don't want a rebellion to, to spawn in the first place. Well, you have the option of, uh, you know, if you click handle them, you can accept their demands. Now, it lists their demands here. So, um, what would happen is we would gain 10, uh, well, we wouldn't really do this because we don't have any provinces left, but we would lose 10 prestige, um, and Granada would gain cores, and we would give up to Granada, Aragon, and Valencia. And since these aren't our cores, we would only have claims. So, that would be really bad for us, in case that wasn't blatantly obvious. You only accept demands, really, if you absolutely need to, to survive and, you know, maybe fight another war or something. Um, another option you have is to boost stability, which is going to cost you more administrative points, but in this instance, really, we just want to core provinces, so we're not going to spend uh, administrative points to do that. Lastly, if the rebellion progress is at least 30%, you can do what's called harsh treatment, and this is going to spend military power to lower uh, the uprising progress by 30%, so long as, uh, you know, and it, the cost of, the actual military power cost depends on the amount of unrest in the provinces at hand here. Considering that the two provinces involved, and if we mouse over on this page, it'll say, you know, 14.2% in Valencia and 102 in Aragon, which coincides and, you know, or corresponds, rather, directly with uh, this unrest uh, tooltip here in the actual province view. Um, at 25% at total unrest, it's going to be pretty costly in military power to actually reduce it. Now, some rebels, if they only have, like, a 1% in the rebellion period, it might cost like 10 military power. 
But remember, we don't want to spend military power at all unless we absolutely have to, because that's going to be what keeps us ahead uh, militarily. So that being said, we now that we've reduced our war exhaustion a little bit, um, we are going to start coring these provinces. Now, one way we can do it, and I'll show you here, is you just click on the province, and under cores and claims, we have this button, and it'll say, you know, make core, and it'll tell you how much administrative power it costs and why. So, and it tells you how long it's going to take as well. So this is going to take 18 months, so it'll be, you know, a year and a half. And we'll click yes. Um, another way you can do it is through your production interface. There is a button down here, uh, make into a core. You know, it tells you how much overextension you have, uh, what provinces are giving how much percentage of that, which can be important if you want to reduce your overextension stat as much as possible, which you do because it's going to lower uh, national unrest. Um, we can click this button here, and it'll ask the same thing, basically. So it's a lot cleaner and a lot quicker to get there. But wait, there's more. If you go under your Stability and Expansion tab, and you go into uh, the overextension area here, and you click Manage... Um, and this is the best way to do it, in my opinion. You go to this tab, go to Manage Overextension, because when you click Make Core here, and it lists all the information, you know, base tax, culture, overextension, and the actual cost. When you click Make Core here, it doesn't ask you if you want, if you're sure that you want to do it. Which means that if you have like 10 provinces you need to core, you can just, you know, bam, 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 and you know, you're done. So we're gonna make this into a core through this page. And that's going to take 18 months as well. So it'll be done in June of 1452, as will this one. All right, so now we're dealing with the aftermath of the war. Um, we have lost basically every soldier in our country. And um, as a result, we have a looming disaster. The Peasants' War. Now, what are disasters? Um, under the Stability and Expansion page, yet again... We're going to become quite intimate with this page by the end of the uh, campaign. Um, there are things called disasters. And disasters trigger when you're basically when your country isn't doing so hot. So if your stability is negative, or even at zero um, and not one, um, you can have these disasters start to you know show up. And there are anything from like this. Uh, the Peasants' War is basically your people are upset that all of the you know people in your empire have gone off to die in wars. You know, understandably so, uh, some would say. Um, it tells you, you know, uh, that the conditions for this are to have no current disasters, which we don't. Not be at war, which it doesn't say, but we're not at war, so it's not an issue. Or we are, we're not at war, so that is an issue, I should say. And uh, manpower level is less than 25%. So, um, our manpower is basically at nothing. I don't know the exact math off the top of my head, but we're probably going to need somewhere in the neighborhood of about um, 8,000 soldiers, if I had to guess. Um, we need 8,000 soldiers to actually reinforce our armies. So, um, it, basically, so say we want to let this happen, right? Um, it would give the following effects. National Unrest plus 5, which is awful. It's going to make rebels pop up everywhere. And stability cost modifier plus 50%. So this, uh, to raise stability for us right now, would cost 120 for the following reasons. Um, we have a advisor, which lowers it by 10%, but then we have... Um, but then half of our overextension is going to raise the cost of this by 30%. Um, religious unity also affects how much this costs. So if your country isn't fully of one religion, or you don't have ideas that boost that uh, score, then you're going to run into issues here. Um... But anyway, um, yeah, so that would go up additionally by another 50%. And then if we look at the, if we mouse over the progress bar, it tells us, um, how much it's happening each month, um, and why. So if we look here, um, if this doesn't fire within a year, um, what we may want to do is raise our stability to plus one, um, as that overextension ceases to happen. Now, that being said, um, maybe we... Uh, what I was considering, and what you might be considering in this, if you were in this situation, is um, using that Consolidate Regiments button. And the reason for that is because it would stop these reinforcements. But, that being said... That being said, if we raise our stability and we end this overextension issue, then it, it won't be an issue anymore. It, it goes at 2% every month. We are currently 
at if we mouse over here you're currently at two percent so that's gonna be another 48 months these are gonna core in 18 months so what are we gonna do we're gonna continue to let our troops just uh, reinforce and we're not gonna worry about it even though a this disaster will be really bad because in addition to the effects listed it's also going to spawn for actually you know getting us to um, deal with it now uh, the game just take up because I auto save at every year I'm not playing this uh, tutorial campaign on Iron Man mode um, okay now here's here's something interesting um, France has entered a military coalition against us now remember that over extension we were talking or not over extension that aggressive ex expansion we were talking about we have negative 35 which is kind of bad if you consider that uh, it only goes down by 2.1 every year so it's gonna take us fully 18 years to get all of this away um, from France. But France is our rival, so they don't like us anyway. Um, but basically what a coalition does, since France just started one, um, any country that's involved in a coalition, um, if the target of the coalition goes to war with anyone that's part of the coalition, the entire coalition gets called in. Furthermore, if the entire... You know, if one member of the coalition goes to war against uh, the target of the coalition in an offensive war, then all the other members get called in. It's a way of basically forming, um, you know, a cheap alliance, more or less, with a, with a bunch of people who, you know, basically feel the same way about your country. Now, Aragon would probably enter the coalition as well, but we have a truce with them, and you can't join a coalition if you're in a truce. So, that being said, we're going to unpause the game. It is unfortunate that France did that in the first place. But we'll deal with it. Just like we're going to deal with this uh, Peasants' War. Now, it is unfortunate that we're going to have to spend the um, administrative points to have to raise our stability to get this to stop from firing. But, that being said, we can begin to look onward. Um, our nation has grown a little bit. You know, we gained two provinces, two fairly substantial provinces at that. And now our next plan should be to take back Granada and finish the Reconquest, which is our current mission. You know, the Reconquista, I should say. Um, so yeah, we're now just, uh, we're in a quieter part of the, uh, you know, the game here. Um, we don't have any buildings yet that we can build, so that's not a problem. Um, and whenever time is passing like this and you're just waiting for something like, you know, provinces to core or, um, you know, get in, getting enough money and stuff like that, just always be, you know, looking out on the horizon uh, and things of that nature to see what you can do. Um, now, we could begin to fabricate more claims on Aragon. However, there is a risk associated with this. Because if we get discovered, that's going to be another 7.5 aggressive expansion penalty and if we look through this exhaustive list <laughs> of everything on here let's see if we can try to find France France uh, would not take 7.5 they would take an additional 10 aggressive expansion uh, opinion of us so instead what we're gonna do well one thing we could, could consider doing, I'm not going to do it, but you could consider improving relations with France. Now, France is our rival, so, you know, they're not going to like us or anything, but they might leave a coalition against us if they liked us a little bit more. Especially since they're the only one in the coalition. So it's not really that much of a threat anyway, even though France is probably stronger than us. Um, their only ally, though, is Hungary. It's all the way over here. And as we discussed before... Um, allies who are landlocked away from you that can't help you are basically useless allies. So Aragon's alliance with Burgundy, basically useless. And that's just the way it goes. Um, now, we wanted to release Sardinia in that war, but I felt it more prudent to end the war early. However, during the next war, we would probably consider that. Um, especially since Aragon is much weaker for losing these two provinces. All right, we uh, only need about you know 5,600 men still, and that's gonna be you know it's gonna take a while um, for it. We basically need you know 54 men, and we get 2.35 every month if we want to just divide it by 100 there. All right, we have a new uh, active seat on the cardinal. I'm not even gonna explain the papacy yet because it's it's such a um, 
it's not very important to us right now. But anyway, um, we just got two new pop-ups. Um, first of which is Defender of the Faith. Um, and that's part of religion, so we'll just talk about it later. Um, but anyway, we uh, got a pop-up for this. The little uh, coins and the gear, which is our technology. And we have gained enough military points to get to Military Tech 4. And at every tech level, it's going to tell you exactly what you get for it. So it's going to raise land morale by 0.5, which at this stage in the game is good, considering we only have 2.5 uh, land morale to begin with. And it's going to raise our military tactics by 0.25. Remember, any bonus like these that can help is, is good. To quote one of the uh, streamers of this game that I watch, one of the YouTubers I watch, um, having a bonus is better than not having a bonus in every case so yeah we want to take this because what else could we spend our military power on well we don't have any ideas yet to spend it on and we already have a general even though and it's, it's telling us here that we could get another one but there's no point when we can just raise our military tech instead so, so keeping that in mind we're gonna click on this it's gonna tell us you know it's gonna cost us 538 military power okay and it tells us we have all these things. And additionally, we can now build armories. Now, why are armories important? Well, they're the first building on the track to getting our manpower to recover more quickly. So, um, buildings are interesting. I'm going to take a minute to talk about these because it's not that complicated. Um, every building is going to have a cost of both... Um, at, you know, ducats and in power. So to build an armory is going to cost 50 ducats and 10 military power. And it's going to take 12 months to build. Now when we think about this, um, what armories do is they uh, increase the manpower of a given province by plus 25 and lowers recruitment time by 5%. Neither of which on its own is very good, but these stack with later buildings in the tree. And each building later down the tree will cost more and uh, but the amount of power it costs stays the same. So that being said, um, if we look here, it's going to raise our manpower uh, by 25. Now that is not a monthly, that is a yearly increase. So really that's going to give us two more people per month. However, we need to think of a grand strategy game like Europa Universalis 4 in terms of years. We the game ends in 1821, so we have roughly 375 years still. I don't know off the top of my head what 375 times 25 is, but I can guarantee you that it's probably worth 50 ducats and 10 military power, and it's going to help us later down the road. So what we're going to do is we're going to build it in a province. Um, these numbers here indicate how much is already being produced in this country and what the bonus is going to be for having that. So we're going to build it in this province here in um, Salamanca because it already has a significant, you know, a very substantial um, manpower base. So yeah, we're going to let that build. It's going to take a year to build it which is unfortunate, and it's not going to really help us with the Peasants War. Um, but remember, always be thinking ahead in Grand Strategy in Europa. Just always be thinking ahead and how things are going to benefit you in the future as opposed to now. Only think of the now if you need the now. But if you don't need the now, you know, think about later. Now, because we accepted the nobles' uh, demands, I assume that's what happened, we have this terrible... 112 leader. This is an interesting event. Um, we lose a base tax in Galicia and gain a base tax in Toledo. Now, how good is Galicia to begin with? It's a base tax 4. So, really, we're not losing that much. Considering that Toledo is a 7. So, let's do that. So now Galicia has more autonomy, which is going to lower on rest, you know, that's good. Um, but also the base tax is going to go down to 3, but Toledo is going to go up to 8. And since uh, that's our capital and we have no autonomy here, that's going to be a gain for us. In, in the short term, of course. Now we have another 10 military power. We're just going to start cranking out some of these armories. Because we really want to just focus on getting our more manpower once again. Alright, um, the coring of our province is just finished. So now that these provinces are cores, um, 
on the next month we will be able to see that they are going to actually give us money and voila now we're getting money now the autonomy in these provinces is still pretty high at 38 percent but all the same we're making that much more money every month and every year so uh, we're gonna build another armory I'm just gonna keep you know cranking these out just keep building them and now these are cored we can go to our stability page and we could just uh, spend 90 now instead of 130 of our administrative power on raising our stability which will stop the peasants war from happening and so natural or not a natural but a national crisis a, nat a national disaster has been avoided national and natural sound very similar of course and now our men are free to reinforce at their leisure it's gonna take us uh, you know another 3200 men we only make 260 a month you know, but it's only going to take us a year to get our troops fully reinforced, and then after that, we can start building up again and preparing for our war with Granada. Now, what do we want to do in the meantime? Well, that's an excellent question, and I think it's one that I'm going to answer in the next episode. So, thank you for watching, um, and I hope you learned a lot. If you have anything to add to this that you think I left out that's very important, uh, be sure to leave a comment, and I hope to see you on the next one.